when I make these videos, it's like the first thought that pops into my head that it's like, ooh, that would be a cool thing to talk about. <laughs> so it's like, okay, my mother's Alzheimer's ended up popping into my head. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about my observations of what Alzheimer's is. Um, I'm definitely noticing how, like it's a genetic thing. And I can definitely notice within my own personal experiences how I can easily develop that that illness. And my, you got to understand how my mother developed it. There was a lot of abuse in our house. Uh, my father's very controlling and manipulative, and constantly putting her down and criticizing her all the time, and nothing was ever right. So the way my mother always used to handle it is say, my memory's not good, you know, sorry, oops, I forgot, <laughs> you know. And she said that basically from the time I was a kid, she constantly was saying, oops, my memory was no good. And uh, now that she's older, um, she's definitely manifested the illness and it's like, you created that. You know, there's no Alzheimer's in, in our genealogy. It's never been something that anybody in my family passed that has that disease this is almost like a completely new illness that's, that's being created a lot of people have had uh, senility which they're now calling it Alzheimer's but uh, um, you got to kind of understand the patterns that is creating it and it was so friggin obvious I can't see how anybody can't see something that's friggin obvious and I suppose maybe it's more obvious to me because I pay attention to what people say and do and what their actions are. I see patterns. So it's like, it's really in my face to see it. And, and my mother all the time, all the time used her memory as a way to avoid any problems to the point where she manifested it. When she was so weakened and the pain got too great because my father's definitely destroying family he you know worships his son you know he's you know he comes from an alcoholic family so my father doesn't have the alcoholic addiction um, but he passed it on to my brother and you know like he feeds my brother alcohol he watches my brother leave drunk driving with his family like he can't even see that my father is the one that's responsible of making his son an, an al the alcoholic that he hates so much. But he's the male. He loves males for some reason and absolutely hates females for some reason. That's the pattern my father always has is that all females are evil. They're bad. You know, like single mothers on welfare are the biggest problem. Not looking at the fact that my father always used to say that if my mother ever left him, she'd leave and leave with nothing and that she would... He would torture her through court. He would do everything to make her life miserable, to make sure she le if she left him, she would leave with nothing. So leaving was never, ever an option for my mother. Um, so she always had to cope and deal in some way, shape, or form with handling this abuse of my father. And you got to see that she really loves her children, especially her girls, but... Um, she has to to remain in this house knowing that she's living with a man that's destroying her girls and how can she deal with it well just block it out <laughs> you know as long as i don't see it everything's good and that's you know you can kind of see her pattern is just focus on what's good just focus on what's good all the time you know and she really was a driving force to have me you know focus on the positive in life but and she always used to tell me that I was always going through a learning phase. So that kind of, you know, made me pay attention to, okay, what am I supposed to learn from all of this? And uh, ended up repeating the same pattern and married the exact same man as my father, which is like, okay, how did that one happen? Um, but that's how Alzheimer's is created. And if you can see, I can have a conversation with her. And if she loves the conversation, her memory is perfect. It is non-existent, that disease. But as soon as we get into a topic that she can't handle, all of a sudden her memory's gone. Um, she's even been in an argument with my father and uh, said, said to him, this is the funniest thing I've ever heard is, 
she says, look at, I got Alzheimer's. I can't even remember what we're fighting about, you know, so <laughs> joke's on you. <laughs> you know, you can fight all you want, but I can't remember what we're fighting about. So it's kind of pointless, don't you think? How genius is it for somebody that has Alzheimer's to put, you know, a comeback like that so perfectly, you know, like her mind is functioning perfectly, but it's functioning perfectly to sustain an illness in which she can survive on. And what happened as soon as, you know, she developed this illness? Well, my father got perfect control. He controls everything. He drives her everywhere. You know, like she will get to go, you know, she thinks that he's the, the perfect God in her life because anytime she wants to go someplace, he will drive her. But he's in control now. You know, he felt out of control if she drove anywhere and was independent by herself. But he feels more in control if he's the one driving her wherever she wants to go. It's so sick. It's crazy. He doesn't like the cottage and, you know, the, uh, she was really into plants and flowers and the water and the beaches and, you know, people and he, my father's not into that kind of stuff. You know, he very controlling, manipulating, just sit on the couch and watch TV. You know, that that's his purpose in life is to do nothing but sit around and watch TV and talk bad about every freaking woman on the planet. So as soon as she developed this Alzheimer's, what's the first thing this guy did? Sell the friggin' cottage that was supposed to be um, inherited through the family. It was, it was something that had so much meaning that it was something that they were going to pass on through their kids. My, my brother is exactly like my father and hates the cottage, hates um, being around nature, hates the water, you know, hates any type of sports, you know, like he's stuck again in logic 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 sit on in front of actually his thing is a computer somewhat so is mine but um, he's got the same behavior patterns as my father so he didn't want the cottage um, my sister was never into it so I was the only one that was into the cottage and it's like they sold it a and my mother's totally at one with it now she's like oh we didn't need it we didn't really have the time you know, life is good, you know, we're just enjoying our life, and, you know, it's like, what the hell are you enjoying your life with? Like, how come you can't see it? But that is her way of survival. And if you notice, this is the same thing that's going on with any family member that has Alzheimer's. There's something within the family dynamic that in order for the person that's suffering from Alzheimer's, the family dynamic is so powerful that they are not willing to change, but if they really did kind of listen to the person that has Alzheimer's, they listen to the needs, the wants, the wishes, chances are life is more peaceful, more loving if everybody followed that way. More than likely the person with Alzheimer's more of a, you know, loving, right brain, out of the box thinker, where the other family dynamic is very much stuck on left brain thinking. They probably have very control issues. They think their way is always the right way and they need to convince everybody to do things their way. They have um, probably a lot of arguments that go on unless everybody does things their way. But if you ever want to cure Alzheimer's, change your family dynamics. Start paying attention to the one that has Alzheimer's, listen to what it is that they've got to say. What is it that they're asking for? If you give them what it is they need, you'll find a cure. And yeah, there's a lot of uh, minerals and, uh, th you know, they're, they're saying that just um, um, cavities can cause it. There are um, things within our environment as well, not necessarily just behaviors, but your behaviors also create the types of uh, minerals or um, you know any type of poison or toxin that creates and sustains that illness but all of those can be transformed you know you you can reverse anything but you have to sort of pay attention to okay what's causing this and what's the reverse what's the he what's the healing aspect of it now, when I can see that it happens in my life, um, I can see right away from the time I was a kid, I was, I was meeting way too many people in my life. For some odd reason, I would attract a ton of people and they always had a name. 
And it's like, if I remembered everybody's name, it's like there's way too much for my brain to think about. And so it's almost like I shut my own brain off that as soon as somebody gives me a name, I don't even pay attention to it. It's like there's a block right away. So I'm really, really bad with people's names, but that's more of a personal choice. I've, I've made the choice to, okay, I don't even want to bother trying to remember people's names. And um, so I find it challenging. There, there is a way that if I really truly wanted to remember everybody's names, I could be able to do it. It's a matter of do I want to jump into that or not. And clearly I haven't decided to do that. And then I ended up uh, getting into programming. Stupid me, but there's so many acronyms that, I mean, if you're going to write 3,000 pages of code, you can have one dot in the wrong place and that code won't work. You know, so you have to know your acronyms perfectly. It's like you got to remember names perfectly in order to make codes work. So you can imagine how challenging that was for me to make a code work. Um, and spelling, you know, spelling and grammar is so next to impossible for me because uh, there's so many rules that I have to remember. And I'm so much of an out of the box thinker that if I end up setting you know, my beliefs and memories, you know, and constantly had a memory of everything that I needed to remember, then I would go friggin' insane. It's so my life rule is more like garbage in, garbage out. You know, you can only remember what you want to remember. You know, if you don't want to remember stuff, get rid of it. You know, so there's a lot of things that I may not remember, but it's stuff, something that I have personally made a choice to. I personally just don't want to remember that. And uh, maybe to the universe, it's something they want you to remember it. And so they'll put, a, you know, an illness on it, a diagnosis on it and call it a mental illness, you know, al Alzheimer's. So I can definitely see the potential of me creating an illness, but there's no way that illness is going to be manifested unless I recognize my own personal choices in it, you know, and, and what I perceive to be okay and not okay. And as long as I'm the driver of my own bus, you know, and I choose to go in the direction that I want to go, then I'm always going to be all right. And sometimes it is a matter of you making your life rule that, hey, you are not healthy in my life. So, you know, I put a shield, I put, you know, I don't let them into my room if they are constantly trying to destroy me and my health. So as long as I'm, you know, totally, totally aware of where I'm going, there's no such thing as illness. It's just going to be perceived as an illness if other people don't get their way. They want you to be something that you just don't want to be and they'll put a medical name on it. 